Well, Saudi Arabian state oil giant Aramco has reported an almost 40% drop in second quarter profit. Net income was just over $30 billion, down from a record $48.4 billion a year ago. It's down to lower oil prices and production cuts, but is aligned with the overall industry trend. Aramco CEO expects demand in China to continue growing and said the company continues to eye potential acquisitions there. Robin Mills is CEO of Middle East-based energy consultancy Kamar Energy and he joins us now. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on Global Business. So why the big drop in profits? Well, no big surprise really. Uh, oil prices uh, are lower, of course, this quarter as compared to the same time last year. Um, refining margins, sales prices for petrochemical products also lower. So pretty much in line with other oil companies. In fact, uh, Aramco outperformed the expectations by a little bit and uh, most of the other oil companies fell short of expectations. So not a bad result for Aramco and, and, and not unexpected. So do you think that's why the company is saying that these results are still a strong financial position? The company is still in a very strong financial position, absolutely. It has uh, you know, still recorded good profitability, good return on, on, uh, on, on, uh, good return on capital, and it has negative net debt, so plenty of money to, uh, to, to spend, and it's, uh, it continues its capital investment program. Several major projects coming up, both in, in oil and gas. Um, so, yes, yeah, still in a strong position. And current oil prices for now, they're a bit lower than they were last year, but they're, they're still perfectly healthy for a company like Aramco. And the CEO talked about strong demand from China and scope for potential acquisitions there. Is, is that where you see growth coming from and where else could they add value? Well, Aramco bought 10% uh, of Rongsheng Petrochemical, a major Chinese petrochemical company. That's it. That was its big deal this year. Um, yep. So absolutely, they'd be scouting for other deals um, and possibly things in uh, Greenfield. I mean, constructing new facilities in, in China and they're looking at other growth markets. India is the really important one, of course. So. We'll see if, if they, uh, they do some further deals there. And oil futures are now at their highest since mid-April after Saudi Arabia and Russia, of course, pledged last week to keep subs, uh, sub supplies um, down for another month. What's your outlook there? Yes, I think, you know, we have seen oil prices rising every week for the past six weeks, so they're, they're a lot stronger than they were in the second quarter. Um, and, uh, and I expect in the third quarter further gains in oil prices. Um, the global economy is doing reasonably well. And the um, uh, and prices are you know, recovering accordingly. The OPEC production cuts are coming through and having an effect. Um, so yes, I expect a, a fairly good third quarter. And how much would you say uh, air travel, air demand, uh, demand for air travel is providing uh, support for the energy sector? Well, it's been returning, of course. Um, and in fact, you know, we, if you look at it, global air travel, we're actually pretty much back at pre-COVID levels. Um, but the demand for fuel for, for, for air travel hasn't reached pre-COVID levels yet. It's about 85 percent of, of pre-COVID. And, you know, two reasons for that. Long haul travel is less. It's, it's more short haul travel. Uh, and secondly, planes have got a lot more efficient. A lot of older, less efficient planes were retired during the, the pandemic. Um, so it seems structurally that, that air, uh, air jet fuel demand is, is lower. Robert Mills, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you.